Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, just a brief Somebody who writes a story or writes a book, uh, a play, a movie, anything that's written out. Uh, Webster says it's called, written out by a person that's called an author. Somebody, something that tells any type of story. Webster also gives a definition of a script as being the written form of a play, a movie, a book, whatever the author creates. It's called a script. If you go to a uh, production set or you go to a movie studio or you go to where they're filming uh, movies, TV shows, they have writers on the scene. These writers produce scripts. And once they finish with the script, they give the scripts to the actors or the actresses to carry out whatever is written on the script. Not ever do you never see the actors or actresses go back to the writer and say, I think you should switch this, or I think you should make the character do this. But when the writer presents the script to the actor or actresses, their job is simply to carry out what is written on the script. They don't try to alter the characters. They don't try to tell the writer how to write the script. They just do whatever is on the paper for them to do. So in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says that God is looking unto Jesus, the author, and the finisher of our faith. If, if Jesus is the author of our faith, then that means the Bible is our script. And we being the servants of God, it is our job as the servants of God to carry out whatever is written in the script that God has given for us. But we're not all the time like the actors and the actresses. We don't just always take the script as it is written. Us being humans and us wanting to have our hand in everything that we do and everything in every area of our life, we sometimes have a problem with letting God be God. Right. We sometimes have an issue with just taking the script as it's written and see how the story ends. But isn't it just like us to want to put our hands in everything? Amen. Isn't it just like us to want to be involved in everything and want to know what's coming next, what's coming next. Right. But how easily would it be for us to just step back and let God be God? How easy would it be for us to just let him do what he's called to do? He's called to be God for a reason. So obviously he knows what he's doing. So how easy would it be for us to just let the author give us the script and we carry it out the way it was written? So we're going to go through a couple of friends that we, that we have in the Bible and see what was going on with their script and see how they handled their script. We're going to start with David and we're going to talk about David as a young lad. And he talks about how um, they were about to fight and, and, the, and the giant Goliath was there. And David wanted to be a part of this and he felt like he could defeat this giant. And just like, you know, naysayers always got to throw a wrench in your dreams, when you think you can do something and you think you can conquer something and you all got this confidence all built up and then here comes somebody to tell you that you don't have what it takes to do this or you're not qualified to do this or you haven't been in the battle or you don't know how to do this or your experience is not built up enough. And when they came to David with this and told him that he wasn't uh, qualified to fight against this giant, that he would get killed. And he didn't, you know, he didn't get upset about it, but he pretty much said, before you count me out, at least give me the chance to testify. And he began to let them know what God has done for them, what God has done for him, and all the battles that God brought him through when he was out there tackling bears and lions and all this good stuff, and letting them know that he can handle the task. And then we have our other friend, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who were thrown into the fiery furnace because they refused to bow down and worship the golden image. Isn't it just like us to get into some mess? But most of us would try to fight against it. Okay. 
or try to pull against it, but they didn't fight, they didn't even argue. What they said was, even if he chooses not to deliver us, I know that he's able. So how many of us in here know that even if God chooses not to deliver us out of something, we know that he's able. How many of us can give God a praise off of the fact that you know that he's able to do something? So they know that he was able, so they didn't fret about being thrown into the fire. Instead, they went. The Bible says that they were bound and they were thrown into the fire. And instead of them weeping and mourning, they were in there praising God. When he told the man to go look in there and check and see, go and check on them, he looked in there and he saw them walking around the fire loose, praising God. So what does that let us know? They knew what was in their script. They knew that whatever happens while I'm in this fire, I'm going to be all right. If God made it to be where I don't make it out of the fire, I'm still going to be all right. They knew what was in their script. And because they knew what was in their script, they were able to go in with the confidence knowing that everything is going to be all right. And then we have the woman with the issue of blood. She was sick for 12 years. The Bible says that she had spent every dime that she had going to doctors trying to find a cure, trying to find something that was wrong with her, and nobody could help her. But then somewhere along the way, she heard that a man named Jesus was passing by. And so she decided, because she had faith in her script, that she was going to get herself together. And that she was going to go and see this man called Jesus. And she had enough sense to know that just being in his presence was enough. That she didn't have to have a full-blown conversation with him. But if she could just touch the hem of his garment, that she would be made whole. And that's exactly what happened. Because death wasn't in her script. Illness wasn't in her script. But faith was in her script. So she was able to get her healing and her deliverance because she believed the script that God had written for her life. Amen. When I was a little girl, my mom used to watch this show. And she used to watch it Monday through Friday, faithfully. And whenever I was home with her, I would watch the show with her because... Um, it was interesting to me too. So the show was called All My Children. <laughs> mm. And one of the characters of the show was Erica Kane. And I'm, I'm talking about Erica because she was one of the ones that used to work my nerves because as a child, it was hard for me to understand. She was always getting into something. She had multiple husbands. <laughs> She done attempted and got killed three, four, five times. She had all kinds of stuff going on in her life. And it was, it was bothering me because I could never understand how in the world was she going through all this stuff. Every episode just about something was going on with Erica. And she always made it to the next episode. She always made it. She never died. And it bothered me my whole childhood. I was really wondering how in the world is this lady making it through all this stuff and she never gets killed off. And it wasn't until I was an adult that it hit me. Two things. Number one, Erica Kane was a main character in the storyline. That's right. That's right. Number two, because she was a main character in the storyline, death wasn't in her script. That's right. So they had a lot of stuff going on and happening to her. That's right. But no matter what she went through in the storyline, death in her script. I need like at least five people in here to start to realize that everything that you're going through is happening for a reason, but because of the God that you serve, death is not in your script. You need to open up your mouth and start speaking some things into your life Amen. and go they work because God did not ordain you to die, but he said that you shall live to the of the works of the Lord. And then they did a biopsy on me, and later on they told me 
that it was stage one cervical cancer. And I didn't, I really didn't um, have a, a bad reaction to it because I already talked to the Lord and I told him, I said, this is not what you promised me. This is not what you told me. And I don't accept this. Yes. Because I just don't. Mm -hmm. And that's just how I talk to him. Right. When I know that he told me something, and I know that he gave me this word, and he promised me this, I don't accept nothing less than what he gives me. Right. Because I've learned to believe what's in my script. And so, months down the road, a few weeks ago, when I had to go to the hospital for a totally different reason, I woke up with an unexplainable pain in my side that stayed all day. So we went to the hospital to get it checked out. And so in the midst of them trying to find out what was going on, I mean, they literally ran a whole bunch of tests, including ultrasounds. They even did another biopsy. Ultrasounds came back fine. A couple of days later, I got my email. I had a message from the hospital on my chart about my biopsy results. So I checked. I never said to them the whole time that we were there anything about the cervical cancer. Didn't say a word about it. So they did the same, the same biopsy that they did on me at my primary care doctor at the earlier part of this year. So I checked the biopsy results, and it's like you said in the doctor's notes that you know everything was fine. There was no risk attacked. Amen. There were abnormal cells there. Let's dance.